The fun and lively Neapolitan song is, in my opinion, one of the greatest masterpieces within the album. It is also one of the more difficult pieces. It's one of those that presents problems in the left hand and simultaneously problems in the right hand, making it quite a technical challenge. Why don't we start with uh, the big bugaboo, which is the left hand and it's very difficult repeated chords. As always with repeated notes and especially with repeated chords, we are somewhat at the mercy of the instrument on which we are playing. If um, the mechanism of the piano is not well regulated or is sluggish and the keys don't come up very fast, the repetition will naturally be slow. However, we cannot be defeatist and we must think of ways to make the repetition work better. I can think of two ways to help us play the repeated chords successfully. They look and feel different, but the effect is the same. All we are doing is helping our fingers and our hands move extremely quickly. In the first of these ways, we're going to vary the position of our wrist. So we're going to start very low and then raise the wrist up. Did you notice I started with a quite low wrist? So many piano teachers object to having the wrist which is below the horizontal level because of course that causes some stress. However, as most problems that we have as pianists, it's not the moment of stress that causes the problem, it is the failure to release the tension afterwards. If you actually move your wrist, by the time you are on the last of the chords and all the way up, the tension is long gone. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. The second way of playing these chords, you're going to leave your wrist alone. This is going to be all about visualizing where your fingertips are. So for the very first chord, you're going to play on the edge of the key and as the chords go on, you're going to move higher and higher up the key, sort of walking your way towards the lid. have a suggestion which you might consider to be a cheat but I don't because all the notes that the composer wrote are present and accounted for and sound much better and that is this the repeated notes are the most obvious when they are exposed when there is no melody on top of them like for example the first measure um, so we can suffer and struggle with the left hand or we can split the notes between the two hands first left and then right or the left hand can take one of the right hand's notes so the right hand has only two to play instead of three did you hear how short sharp accurate and quick these notes were this will work very nicely also where the right hand doesn't have a lot to do and is just holding a note like in measures 10 and 11 for example safe. I think safe in performance is a very important quality. Um, if you still disagree with me about splitting up the hands, I would like to quote the great German-Italian pianist Ferruccio Busoni, who is in many ways the father of our modern piano playing style, having taught all the great pianists at one time. He said that instead of working hard to adapt yourself to the difficulty, you should work to adopt the difficulty to yourself. How extremely wise. So now that we have dealt with the left hand, let's deal with the right. Here, there's a combination of legato and staccato that gets students into trouble. The first thing to remember is that the slur is just between two notes. I very often hear this. You hear what's wrong with that? That was a three note slur. We only need two. So in other words, 
in the second measure, only one note is held and all the others will be jumped. Right? Right? So then, as always, we have to consider how to do the shortest and sharpest possible staccato. Again, I have two ways because everybody's different. Way number one is a finger staccato, or what I call a flicking or scratching motion, where you simply flick your finger as fast as possible. This is a marvelous articulation. It produces a sound of extreme brightness, but the articulation is a little bit slow. So if you're playing the piece slowly, that will work wonders for you. If you want it to go very fast, it might not. So a slightly faster, but still very successful way of playing staccato is what I call the pokey staccato, where um, the action will be done right here at the, this joint, which is called the bridge, where you're simply going to lock the joints of the fingers and poke them in. Still successful, but because the elbow is a much faster joint than the wrist and then the fingers, we're able to play the knits very quickly. So the next issue in the right hand is the wrists. This piece is supposed to be a lot of fun and a lot of this fun is in fact contained in the wrists. and made the following note, the accent, come just a little bit late, creating this feeling of flirting, perhaps, and certainly of a dance, makes the piece so very much more fun. Finally, there is the very fun and not at all difficult section at the very end with all the scales. <laughs> Tchaikovsky says Piumoso a little bit earlier. I say, go for it. Go as fast as you can. I mean, you've practiced your scales, right? Which means there's nothing difficult about that. And what a spectacular conclusion to a very difficult and very show-offy kind of a piece.